Hello, my friend. Welcome to Airport CEO. My name is Tobel, and welcome to this brand new channel just for simulation games. The first thing we're going to take a look at is this airport simulator because I love the airport sub genre, I guess, if you will, of simulation games. It has been out in development for quite some time. We're on Alpha 34, if you can see behind the contrail, and lots of updates, multiple floors. We've got turnaround services, large aircraft, research and development, all sorts of fun candy. Uh, they are still working on this game. I recently did just read a blog post from the developers, so there is active development happening on the game right now. I think they're actually starting to work on multiple split... Uh, what is it called? The um, terminal itself. So you can have multiple terminals that are disconnected, and that's going to be a feature coming up in a, in a future update. Now, we get to pick where our airport is located, and as a city... Uh, as a city... As a child of Detroit, Michigan, I'm going to say that we have been given land... Well, water. Uh, they basically built us an island on Lake St. Clair. So we're going to build a new Detroit International Airport called Tobol International because I am so creative. And we'll call this T-O-B and we get to pick a cool little logo. Really like these logos here. These really kind of cool. Let's go with something. I like this series of logos, but I don't know if you can change them. So we're going to go with the highest of high. We are going to aim high for International Airport. Uh, the management mode here is basically how much you want to punish yourself, right? So if you start with no money, you'll mostly just be waiting for, you know, planes to land and for you to get some income. So we're going to go with a cool $2 million in the bank to start with. And welcome to our island. Welcome to the airport. This is the extent of where we can build. And at the start of the game, we only have this section here unlocked. And we could unlock these other ones for 750000 which we are not going to do because that is a lot of money. Now, at the start of the game, you have the technology to service and support small general aviation aircraft. So if you've ever seen a, a municipal airport where you've got Cessna's landing and they're just kind of sitting out there on the tarmac, that's pretty much what we're going to start with. So I'm going to throw down a runway. And by the way, this will be more of a, a tutorial and a let's play. So if you've never played the game before, I will try to explain the very basics so that you can enjoy it uh, along with me. And once you put down a runway, you do have to put down an exit. You can't just drag the terminal right up against the runway. Sorry, not terminal, the taxiway. You can't drag the taxiway right up here. You have to use this special exit. So I'm going to use this angled exit and we'll kind of we'll put it, you know, not every airplane needs the entire runway to land. So we'll put that right about there. And then I shall drag the taxiway down a bit. And what I'm going to do also is put a second runway down. And you might be asking me, why? Why do we put down a second runway? And you know what? I'll tell you. Because we are going to have a lot of aircraft using this airport, especially the general aviation aircraft. And so we're going to have so many planes that are trying to take off and land, it becomes necessary to dedicate one runway for landing and one runway for takeoff so as not to interrupt the flow of traffic. We should be able to, to service a lot more general aviation pilots by doing this. So that's my theory anyways. Uh, let's put down an exit here. Sorry, an entrance down at the end of the runway. Or I guess the start of the runway perhaps. And we're going to drag a really long taxiway roughly out in this direction. Now I'm going to try something different. Uh, a traditional airport, you would have the taxiway running parallel to the entire runway. What we're going to do is actually try to control the flow of the incoming airplanes and force them to go a certain uh, direction so that we don't overload our taxiway. So what I mean by that is we're going to put down this aircraft stand. This is where the uh, aircraft will actually come and park their aircraft. So we're going to put down, oh, let's start with five of these stands on one side. And then I'm going to drag the taxiway between them. I like to use a five wide. I don't think it really matters. I think you at least need maybe three, but maybe even less than that. I'm pretty sure you need at least three to make it somewhat believable. Uh, we'll also do the taxiway out to here. Let's do a couple more like that. And then we'll do five like this, five wide again, and then connecting with that like that. All right. So the reason I'm doing this is instead of having one taxiway where, you know, maybe this plane comes to land and then someone tries to go park, but maybe someone who's already parked is coming out to take off. That's going to cause a bit of traffic. So instead of that, we're going to make people land and come use this back taxiway and then kind of pull into 
their section to park, and then they're going to pull out onto this taxiway to take off. Maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense just describing it, but you'll see it and kind of understand it once we get into the swing of things. So there are 10 parking spaces. If you notice right behind where the aircraft will park at, there's also this tiny little service road. This is where your service vehicles are going to be able to uh, service everything. So we're going to put that right there. I'm going to make this road jut across like this. And we're going to have uh, some items and some buildings over here that I'll explain in just a few moments. But first, let me do da 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 da, da like that. Okay, there we go. So that's the basic, basic, basic stuff. We also want to start looking towards the future. Now, we're going to start off small. Uh, we're going to have just a very basic general aviation airport for a little bit. We're going to see how much money that makes us. And maybe we're going to do commercial flights with small aircraft, or maybe we'll just jump right into the medium style aircraft. It really depends on how much money we make from this general aviation side. But I do want to start moving our road. We're going to uh, extend this road off to the side because eventually I want to use maybe this section for our medium type of planes. And the medium planes are things like a CRJ 900 or 700. That's a plane that might take you from, you know, Chicago to Detroit. Uh, Orlando to Atlanta, stuff like that. Very small twin engine jet that has about, I don't know, 70 to 90 people on it. That's roughly what a small or the medium aircraft are going to be. So with all that being said, we've got our rough plans in place. In order to actually build stuff, we have to hire a contracting company. So we're going to go into economy, offered contracts. I'm going to let the game unpause for a minute because I happen to know that for every service you have in the game, there will generally be two companies at least that offer you something to to some to, to solve that service, right? So if you have fuel, you'll have multiple fuel delivery. We have two construction companies. Uh, we're going to pick Brickley because they can actually bring more contractors on site at a time. So boom, right there. Contractor, deploy all of the contractors ever. They're all going to get delivered over to here. And they're going to start working on our lovely airport. Now... We also have a system in the game for research and development. And at the start of the game, you really don't know anything other than, hey, I want to provide fuel and I want to provide a place for planes to, to park. What we want to do is start doing some research. But to do research, you have to have administrators and administrators have to be inside of a staff room with a desk. So what we're going to do is move into a new building. Now we're going to use the terminal designation. It's not really going to be a terminal. But we're going to use that because it's the only way to actually make a room. Uh, let me also do one more thing real quick. I'm going to extend the service road all the way down here like this. And we're going to put a checkpoint between the service road side and the kind of public road side. And this is where our service vehicles... Crap, you know what? That is not the road I wanted to do. I wanted to do that over on this one right here. Zavia, very, very good. So we are going to have the checkpoint over here. Again, this is where you separate out the kind of public transportation from your service area. And I'm also going to throw down a couple more things. We're going to put down a parking garage, which is going to be where we keep our refueling trucks. We're also going to put down a fuel depot right over here. So our fuel trucks can actually fuel up and then take fuel over to the planes that land. So this is all this is all stuff that's going to be built over time. Uh, you know what? For funsies, we'll also throw in an air traffic control tower. This does not have to be near the runway. It doesn't have to be serviced by a road. It can literally just has to be somewhere on the map. We could put it back here in the corner and it would still be fine. So I'm going to throw the air traffic control tower over here. Kind of right up against this little service road just for, you know, a, you know aesthetic look. But it doesn't actually need to touch a road or anything. And that's that, that by, by those items right there, we're going to be able to start up and run a general aviation business. And the tutorial, by the way, if you see this in the corner, this will teach you how to do all this stuff I'm doing right now. So it'll take you through what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be covering. And I would suggest doing what the tutorial says because you will get a bonus of $1 million if you complete tutorial number two. And that's actually going to be really important for us later on as we start to expand into this different zone. So something to keep in mind there. Um, let's go ahead and put down the most basic of basic terminals right here. So we're going to say a five by five building with, I don't know, a little section here in the back for a bathroom because you know we are not cruel. 
we uh, we are going to provide bathrooms for our staff members. And I'll also put down a car stop because we want people to be able to actually, you know, get dropped off for work. Although I suppose if I was really fancy, I could put down an actual parking lot for our staff members. But you know what? We're not that fancy. We're just going to go when somebody gets dropped off. Maybe they get dropped off by taxi. Uh, whatever it happens to be. And while this is all being constructed, I will add in a couple things like a door here. We're going to add in a couple walls to separate the men's room from the ladies' room. That's how much I care about my employees. We're literally giving them a bathroom. You don't have to give them a bathroom. Uh, but you know what? We're going to do it anyways. And we're going to go really crazy and give them a hardwood floor. I mean, look at this. This is how much we care at Tobol International. Uh, we're also going to give them a couple of flowers because why not? Let's improve that morale a bunch. For the bathrooms, you do have to designate this bath. Like, you have to use this bathroom tool to designate where the bathroom is. And then you can kind of drop some stuff in here. Toilets can be uh, placed right next to each other. They are enclosed and they have their own door, so you don't have to wall them off on your own. Put a sink in here. Really, these are kind of unisex bathrooms. We won't put urinals down or anything. Not that we're... I don't know. We might walk, uh, work up to this many people needing to use the bathroom at any given time, but at the start of the game, we are not going to quite have this many people needing the restrooms or anything, but there you go. Our buildings are under construction. Uh, just for funsies, I will throw down a couple of desks in here as well. Oop, it has to be in a staff room, so we designate this as a staff room. There we go, that's fixed. Office space over here, desk, desk, look at that. They've even got space between each other. So I'm gonna let the game speed up ahead for a bit. We have a lot of building that needs to take place, so we're just gonna watch our money slowly drain away and everyone's going to start working on uh, building different projects and stuff. I could, actually real quick, let's go ahead and go into the management panel and staff and applicants because I want to start hiring some of these administrators. We're going to pick up all of the administrators and once they're hired, you can assign them to a research and development project. So we want to research commercial licenses. However, what I'd actually really like to do is you can notice here these are different project groups. These let you research simultaneous things. So I can run two or three re separate research projects at the same time. And I, I wouldn't mind doing at least one more. So in order to get project group open, I have to research project group one. This unlocks this set of passive things down here. And then once we do that, you see at the bottom, it unlocks project group. Really, this should probably be like project group B because this is, you know, project group, project group. But I'm gonna do this mostly behind the scenes just because we've got a bunch of time. There's our administrators. You do have to assign them to the project. And yeah, we're, we're pretty much going to wait from there. So our people will get delivered, maybe. There we go. There's our first employee. Welcome, uh, Gabriel Roy to Tobol International. I'll even open up the restroom. There we go. You got bathrooms. If we're feeling really super mega fancy, we can even put in a couple of really nice windows if you want to spruce things up. Uh, you may notice that this game doesn't seem to have, at first glance, a lot of decorations in the, uh, the inside of your building and, and some of those items are uh kind of behind research and and really some things just aren't even in the game like it just it doesn't seem like this game has as much decoration as say another game sim airport does but you know it might focus on more of the business management side and you know it's kind of like your own opinion you may uh you may feel one way or the other but you'll notice some subtle difference uh, differences between those two games i think sim airport is actually released already while airport ceo is still here in early development. So there we go. Let's let our folks run wild for a bit and I'll be back once they are done building our runway and taxiway. One thing I wanna do before we completely finish out our construction, now that we have our fuel depot, we actually need fuel to get delivered. So in order to do that, again, we're gonna go into this contract screen and accept a contract from Avafuel who will bring us a ton of fuel every day. And there's a certain price. I really don't see why you wouldn't choose the higher rated company uh, because the other companies provide less fuel and they also charge more so we'll go ahead and sign a contract with avafuel and they will automatically depart and bring you fuel at the resupply level you can actually drag this symbol whenever there is not already an order coming so right now they're actually bringing fuel off map 
they'll uh, bring it in their fuel truck, they'll go through the checkpoint and drop all that off for us. Now we're gonna need our own vehicles to deliver fuel from our depot to a plane. So we're gonna jump into vehicle purchase and we're gonna pick up three Fjord fuel trucks. Nice way to dodge a copyright. Uh, the Fjord fuel trucks take about 45 minutes to order, which for whatever reason, that's fine. And then once they're here, we're gonna be able to offer Avgas as one of our services to our lovely, lovely pilots. All right, so our employees here, our contractors are just about finished building the last little bit of taxiway. So what we have to do at this point, we have our runways, our taxiway and our parking all pretty much ready to go. We have to tell the aircraft where to how, where they can actually travel on this taxiway. So we're gonna use this uh, taxiway path tool and basically just connect the dots is all we're doing. And you start off at the end, if you saw that right over here, there's like a little tiny symbol. So you wanna start off where that symbol is and generally draw, I mean, you could probably do it along the edge of your runway if you wanted or your taxiway, but for you know realism's sake, we're gonna do it right dead center of our taxiway right dead center, meet up with the other line. And then you do have to connect each individual parking stand to your main line, but you only have to do it once. It's not that big of a deal. And there we go. So we're telling the aircraft that land here, hey, you can use anywhere our blue dots have gone. And you'll notice that there's actually kind of an already nice crossing here between our service road and the taxiway. So you don't have to do anything special if you want your vehicles to cross the road. They'll do it pretty much automatically. And now we have to say runway, one of you is an arrival runway, which is this one. And you notice that it's already set to accept small aircraft and general aviation. So hit accept there. And then this one is going to be for departure and open. Now I won't change this right here. For some reason, if you do something like exit only, the game gets really confused. It does not like having a runway with only one single exit or entrance. It likes having both. And when it counts as operation mode like dual here, it counts as both. So. Uh, whatever it is, it's fine, and we've opened that. I also went ahead and uh, added some Pappy lights here. This is an upgrade you can find under the runway upgrade. Uh, Pappy Precision Approach oh, Pilot Indication, something like that. Basically, it lets you know if your aircraft is too high or too low as you're approaching with your landing. So that is that. And yeah, I think at this point, we are ready to open Tobol International to tiny little planes. So we're gonna go into operations and first we're going to enable Avgas service, then we're going to allow general aviation, and then finally we're going to open the airport itself. And there we go. With those easy steps, our airport is now open. And even though it's like in the middle of the night, we will still have general aviation landing because they don't care. They're going to, I like how the lights are off balance on this model. Uh, they don't care. They're going to arrive at any point during the day. Now we are gonna be making money from them landing, from them getting fuel from us, and from just sitting parked on our runway. So that is why it's such a nice thing to have, because as you start to build the rest of your airport, this is just going to be a passive moneymaker. It's going to sit here and just make us money with very little investment, other than the initial you know, stands, making sure we have enough vehicles. You'll also see here that it's requesting fuel service, and as soon as it parks, it's going to trigger one of our vehicles here. And then you can see the lights over there. It was like it turned around inside. So it's going to come out and go all the way down to refuel. Now the trucks are pretty smart. So if, for example, this vehicle, uh, this aircraft parks, let's take a look and see what it's going to do. It's really close. So in theory, this would be really smart if this vehicle serviced this plane. But I think because it's already starting its way back, we'll see. How smart is it? Yep, there you go and it immediately went right to this uh, aircraft that landed. So sometimes the uh, the AI for the fuel trucks are actually really intelligent and they'll make smart decisions like doing that, which is pretty cool. Many aircraft coming in. The amount of aircraft that we have landing is going to be dependent on our general aviation rating and the satisfaction rating. So this is all really high right now. However, it's going to take some time for our average to climb up to what the current setting is. So it's going to get roughly like 80% or so. The higher your overall average GA rating, the more GA aircraft will start to service and traffic your airport. So we are going to definitely want to try to keep them very, very happy. And eventually we're going to try to fill all of these uh, parking slots. And then we'll add more parking, more parking, and more parking. Also, I want to delete this road here because I want to use this space. So I'm going to move. This is the 
contractor delivery zone, contractor site right here, <clears throat> excuse me, and then this is the drop off for goods. So like if you actually put down a blueprint for something, that's where all the goods will be stored at. So I'm gonna remove most of this road. There is a part of the road you cannot delete. It is it's set in stone that this section of road has to be here. Uh, also, you can see all of our gnats. <laughs> all of our contractors are sitting here just waiting for something to do. So if you aren't doing anything in your airport, make sure you do dismiss them. Otherwise, they will just sit there and uh, basically just waste your money. Now, while I've got them here, I am going to go ahead and build the next section of storage. For, sorry, storage, parking, really, for our aircraft, for uh, the general aviation folks. So I will be doing pretty much the same exact thing. Five wide here, and then we're going to throw down a terminal in between. And then run the terminal roughly all the way like this. Delete that little bit of extra stuff I put down, and then add in our service road. Just a little tiny bit on that side, and then we, oh, forgot we had to cross over to here. There we go. And that is that. So yeah, we are going to continue to expand. I'm going to just do this now because we have all of our contractors on site. We as well use them instead of sending them home and then bringing them back a couple hours later. Uh, what are we doing for research right now? How far along on the research tree are we? We're about halfway to getting this next project group open, which means we're going to be able to do multiple projects at the same time. This is the section I told you about that has like some passive items. So if you start to assign people to upkeep cost reduction, you'll reduce the amount of money you spend every day for operating uh, operating costs. So very, very helpful as your airport uh, starts to get bigger and more popular. All right, so our project has been completed. Let's take a look at our new, uh, we got two project groups here. So we're going to start researching commercial license because this is going to let us do things like uh, take a master contract with an airline and then start, you know, doing check-ins, security, stuff like that. So that's going to unlock a ton of additional uh, research. I'm also going to ha go ahead and start researching some bigger fuel trucks and some bigger fuel depots. This is all stuff we don't really need at this very moment. However, sometime down the road, we're going to move into needing bigger depots and bigger aircraft service. So that is uh, kind of all in preparation for moving to a middle-sized airport. Let's also hire a bunch more administrators for funsies. They really don't cost all that much money. So I do want to go ahead and use as many as possible. And we're going to go ahead and reduce the cost of our upkeep since I do have a bunch of available administrators. So that should be relatively helpful. And we're almost done with the extra part, uh, the extra parking on this side of the airport. And I think once this is done, I'm going to send all of our lovely friends here on home. We just finished our project for commercial airlines, I believe, overall. By the way, this is a shortcut to a lot of different little areas. So we'll take a shortcut to our research tab. Now, we've just unlocked a bunch of new items. So we can start looking at medium aircraft, for example. Uh, floor construction is very interesting. This is going to allow us to use multiple levels of a terminal. So, I mean, much like any common airport these days, you would normally board from a second story type of position um, over a jetway and then into the aircraft. So I'm going to try to mimic that. I don't know if I'm going to be entirely successful, but, you know, we're going to try it nonetheless. So we'll, let's go ahead and start queuing up medium aircraft. That's going to be a very large term project or a large scale project. That's going to take quite a bit of time. I'll pull some people off of our, uh, our passive job here and throw them onto the medium aircraft, uh, permit type of research. And as you see so far, everyone's relatively happy. Our overall general aviation score is going up right now. They're, they're about 90% in terms of how they think we're doing. The fees are reasonable. The uh, There's no real delays. Everyone's getting turned around very, very quickly. The only thing they're not entirely happy about is the infrastructure. And I believe this is um, the car. Yeah, the, the quality of the runways and the stands. Not necessarily the technology like lighting. Take a look. Is it lighting and stuff? Consumables. It might also be things like better lighting and stuff like that. But it's probably because we have asphalt and not concrete in terms of our runway. So... We can't really fix that just yet. It's going to be a while before we can move into concrete. Look at this plane. This is a high-tech plane. An SF-50. What is this? Is this, um... This actually looks like the Cirrus aircraft. The Cir I think it's Cirrus. Is that right? That's the one that has its own parachute system. What a great model. That looks really, really good. I think the SF-50 might be the Cirrus. That's the one that has... You fly it with a joystick, 
uh, kind of a, a joystick type of interface on the right side. And it's got its own parachute system. It's incredibly high tech and insanely expensive, like 1.3 million per plane. So, you know, if you've got a cool, you know, a million lying around, feel free to pick up your own lovely personal aircraft. Uh, departure wise, not too many issues here. Our planes are pretty much landing, you know, getting whatever service they need and then taking off to do whatever they need to do. There's a Baron 58. Uh, so a Baron is a, a twin engine, I believe. Twin engine prop. Very nice looking plane. <laughs> I like that if there's someone taxiing away right here, it's like that plane would, would pretty much clip them. But it's fine. We don't, we, we phase through each other here at Tobol International. We don't have any kind of traffic problems whatsoever. But so far, everything is relatively smooth. I think I'll just keep rolling with traffic for a bit or uh, with technology. The one thing we could talk about is do now that we have commercial technology research, we could start looking into creating a very small terminal right here in order to unlock and use some commercial flights. So that would definitely be a possibility. Um, spacing wise, I think what I would do is probably put it somewhere in this vicinity. So let's put a taxiway down and you can get all your money back by the way, hundred percent if you delete something before it gets built. So we'll get all this money back. No worries about that. Uh, so if we put, if we put five of these parking areas down, the way it works in terms of commercial flights, you generally have to have your terminal directly up against or very, very close to your parking area for the commercial flights. So these five parking stands would be marked as commercial flights. So this would be more like a chartered flight, right? So you get on board a Cessna or a Baron, maybe nine or 10 people. And it's a very small flight that would, you know, get chartered service. Basically you'd have security, uh, you know, you'd have boarding gate agents and stuff like that. We could have a very, very small terminal here just to experiment with that part of the game. And in fact, I think that might be kind of cool. And we could do like a micro terminal, very, very narrow, very small area for check-ins and stuff like that. Um, why don't we, you know what, let's just do it. Let's do it right now. We're going to throw down, this is going to be the tiniest little terminal in the history of the world. We don't need a lot of seats though, or space for people to wait for their flight. So let's take a look at seating. This one large seat, for example, can hold about 20 people. Now these aircraft don't really hold more than that. So we don't need, a, you know, much more than the 20 seats that we've got. So we could throw down two of these areas or two of these seats per section. And this would be more than enough seating for anyone that's going on any kind of flight. So let's put the seating there. Now that's going to be where you are boarding and, you know, stuff like that for your flight. In terms of actually getting through security, security is a very small, I guess, um, thing in this game. I don't know how to, how to describe it. It's a small square uh, or it takes up a very small amount of space. So security doesn't need to be this giant sprawling area like you would see at LaGuardia or O'Hare. It can just be a very tiny little section of terminal. So we'll do like a little neck right in this section here. It's gonna be, we're going to do mega, mega small. We don't want to use up a lot of our money dealing with this. So this is going to be security. And then this is going to be roughly the main entrance. I'm also trying to save as much money as I can. Uh, for the main entrance, we're going to put in a large random door here. And I'm also going to throw down some parking. So we'll do something like, um, let's throw down a bus stop. We'll throw down a passenger parking. And then taxi parking. Let's extend our road up this direction. I think pretty much that would be, I think that's going to do it. You can actually even just make this a little bit more narrow. Do you want to put anything dead center here? We could put parking down. There is parking in the game. I don't think, yeah, we're like one tile off making this all fit, but I mean, you know what? Let's do it for fun. We'll make it nice and tight. We'll, we'll say that we planned this entire thing out. Uh, here's where our parking is going to be. Short term parking. There we go. So people will come up, go around, and then drop people off, and then continue on their way. We'll also do this to make sure that uh, people don't 
go a funky way into, and you can put down one way directional signage. We'll work on that later on. The traffic gets a little bit weird if I'm being very honest. So that being said, let's go ahead and put down a couple more items in our little arrivals area. We're going to have a check-in desk tucked against the wall. So when you first get to our airport, of course, you will uh, immediately head over to check-in to get your flight information. I don't really think we're going to need too many of these or alternatively... Let's do it like this. Check-in desk over here. There we go. That makes a little bit more sense. Check-in desk here and here. So three check-in desks can serve as, I think, up to six flights. So you can see it's like it's two per section there. And then we'll have something like a wall for funsies. You, don't, you do not absolutely need this at all. Uh, it's more for just for fun for me. I'm going to put a barrier between our secure zone and our unsecure zone. Let's go ahead and remove this wall. Now you have to designate, when it comes to security, you have to designate which area is going to be secure. So obviously the boarding area will be secure. And then halfway down this little tunnel will be secure. The same thing on the other side. And at the border between the secure and the unsecure zone is where you will put your security checkpoint. So, uh, shoot object variation. I think I did. There we go. We have to put it pretty much right here. Perfect. Two security zones right there. Uh, we're going to put in one exit between the secure and unsecure area. I'll even put a wall there to make it look really nice. You don't even need a wall. It's like assume that people are just going to, to see the sticker on the floor and go, oh, I shouldn't go over that because it's, it's you know, it's, it's the law. So that's, that's pretty much it. This is our very, very basic terminal. We have security. We have an exit. We have check-in. If we wanted to get super mega, mega fancy, Meggy. Uh, mega fancy, we could put down a little tiny information desk here in the corner so that if you walk in and you need some help, uh, you can get help there. We can put down some flight information panels here. And of course, when you get out of security, you normally want to check where your flight is and what the status is. So we'll put a couple of those screens here. We're, you know, we're pretty high tech at, uh, at Tobol International. We're going to, we're going to make this happen right there and right there. Lovely. And maybe if we're really kind, uh, we'll actually add in a little tiny bathroom somewhere over here as well. So we'll do something like this. And I'll, I'll kind of tuck that in here in just a minute or two. But that's the rough, basic stuff. Nothing super fancy. It's going to be, again, very tiny flights. So all we're doing, by the way, is we're trying to get the basic stuff going so we can get a feel for how the, you know, the commercial flights go. But we also want to complete tutorial number two because we're going to get a nice, lovely $2 million. So... We have designed the airport, uh, this tiny little terminal. I think I'm pretty happy with how things are. I will go ahead and call up all of our lovely contractor friends. So as our contractors are coming on site, I will. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. We've managed to put down the basic stuff here. We have the designs, at least in place, for our lovely small commercial section. And I think I'm going to do this to save some money. Let's remove that parking spot. And we do want to extend the taxiway or else our... Commercial flights can't actually get to their parking area. So that'll take care of that. Our contractors shall arrive and shall swarm over to the new terminal. And then the next episode, my friends, I'll come back and we should have some uh, our, our little fancy terminal here relatively close to being finished up. So thank you so much for joining me for this first episode of Airport CEO. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to this channel or to uh, to my videos at all, uh, there is an invite to our Discord in the link below this video. Feel, uh, feel free to come say hi. We've got a lot of wonderful nerdy people there waiting to meet your acquaintance. If you wouldn't mind also hitting like, subscribe, and leaving a comment also helps to boost this video's popularity in Google Analytics. So it really helps to get videos out there. Even a simple comment like, hey, cool video, or hey, you suck at airports. That's fine. Uh, just leave it because it actually helps boost the video. And that's money that goes to paying bills. And I appreciate you. So thank you so much for joining me, my friend. As always, you guys are awesome. I love your support. Welcome to this brand new channel, by the way. Nothing but sweet, sweet simulation gaming from here on out. Every day, my friends, every day. Take care, everyone. I will see you again in the next episode. Until then, my friends, be well.